I talked a while ago about uh, the idea of a stream PC being outdated and obsolete and a terrible way of thinking. And I'm going to kind of prove that today by showing you just how well of a stream you can put together by using entry level, mostly entry level hardware. Today's video is sponsored by the Corsair One Pro i200 Compact Workstation PC. Powered by the Intel Core i9-10940X 14-core CPU and NVIDIA 2080 Ti video card, the i200 is the best of both worlds when it comes to water-cooled, small form factor PCs for both work and play. To learn more about this tiny but powerful professional-grade PC, follow the link in the description below. So this, as you may recall, is our AMD rig that we've been using for a bunch of different stuff lately. Um, I currently have the 3300X reinstalled. I also have plopped in a GTX 2060 Super, a graphics card that I think is a perfect pairing, uh, at the upper end of perfect pairing, for this particular CPU. Because when we did our original review, we threw a 2080 Super in there and then overclocked it to look for things like bottlenecking to see where, whether or not it would occur. And no surprise, it did occur. Um, but what we've got right now is a 3300X with XMP profile, 3200 megahertz memory, um, no overclock whatever, whatsoever on the CPU. I've changed nothing except for the fan curves because I like to have things run cooler and I don't like to do noise optimization. I just let things run fast and loud and cool. And 16 gigabytes of memory. It does have an X570 gigabyte board in there. However, you can save money on the build by just doing like a B450. You don't need to uh, go with an X570. And to be honest, the X570 will have no bearing whatsoever on the performance that you're gonna see in today's live streaming tests because the X570 itself, unless you're overclocking anything, is not gonna have any sort of uh, impact on performance and that's only gonna have an impact on stability. Performance is still gonna be determined by the CPU itself. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and show you guys some of the settings that we're using here in OBS. Before we get into the settings and stuff, someone in the alley is working and drilling on things and cutting, so you guys might hear some weird background noise. I apologize now. But moving forward. But one thing I think we can all agree upon here is that our target is gonna be 1080p, 60 FPS stream. The reason why we're gonna also be shooting for the 6,000 um, megabits per second upload, or six megabit per second upload, or 6,000 kilobits, is because that's the max upload rate that you can send to Twitch. Um, so obviously that's going to depend on your internet connection. You need to obviously have faster internet and upload than that. Otherwise you will saturate your entire upload, which will also affect your download speeds as well because packets have to communicate back and forth. But that's internet speed related. That has nothing to do quite honestly with the settings and the stream quality that we're going to be looking at here in terms of hardware impact on our rig itself. Now what'll happen is a lot of people will go, I want to build a second PC and use a capture card so that I don't have any performance hit on my main PC. So we're gonna kind of show you right now how even with a $120 CPU and not a big, fat, super expensive, powerful GPU is able to get us in performance. Now there's a couple of things we're gonna to wanna to optimize in OBS and I've already done a lot of it. So I'm gonna show you what those are. If you go to stream, this is where you set up the, where you're setting your, you know, who, who you're sending your information to. We're obviously going to Twitch. Output though, I'm leaving it on simple mode. We can go advanced where we get more options but I don't want to confuse people. I want to show you guys just how quick and easy you can set this up and get an amazing stream. We're going to be testing two different streaming encoders, software H.264 or X.264, which is where the CPU handles the transcoding of all of the frames. And then we've also going to be testing hardware or NVENC encoder, which is Nvidia's new encoder, which is quite good actually, which is one of the reasons why I threw a 2060 Super in here and not an AMD graphics card because we want AMD, doesn't offer the hardware encoder. Oh, I think they actually have one, but it's not as good as NVIDIA's. I know it sounds fanboyish, but ask anyone that will tell you the NVIDIA encoder is really, really good. Um, so we can test the CPU and as well as the GPU itself. Audio bitrate, leaving that the same. Recording quality, this is all if you're recording. So all we care about is this part up here. So when you click on the video tab, this is what we're transcoding our resolution and frame rate to. So our base canvas, that's telling us what size is the actual thing that it's capturing first. So 1920 by 1080. So we're using a 1080 or a 1440p panel that's turned down to 1080 because that's what we're assuming people are going to be using. Um, it is still the dominant resolution. Output scale is also 1920 by 1080. So there's no 
there's no resampling happening in terms of resolution rescaling. So that's already gonna be good for our, our transcode because it's not having to do a resolution change whether up or down, that's harder than leaving it the same. And then common FPS values, this is the FPS that we are targeting. So it actually tells you right here, you have 25 PAL, 24 NTSC, 29.97, 50 PAL. These are like European versus US type of frame rates here. Just go to 60, because like we said, that is our target. Um, and that's it. That's all I changed when it comes to the stream. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply on that. We're gonna test a couple of different kinds of games, a couple of different kinds of games here. We are gonna start with CSGO. If you go on Twitch and you look, CSGO is still one of the very, very, very highly watched um, genres on Twitch. We're also gonna do Doom Eternal because that is an entirely different um, API when it comes to graphics. That's still using Vulkan, which is not D DirectX. And then we are gonna be going to Battlefield 5, which is a very demanding title. So what you're gonna kind of see here is a small, medium, large in terms of putting stress on this particular CPU, and we will be monitoring our live stream right here. This is a live stream uh, account that I set up just for testing stuff like this, so you're never gonna see us really live stream on this, but if you ever catch it live, I'm sure people are gonna see the name, and you hop in there, then who knows, maybe you'll see some of this stuff in the future. I also have all the stats sitting up right here on the side, so you guys will be able to see what the impact hit was. Now, one thing you're gonna notice, with a high FPS game like this, the live stream is gonna actually seem a little bit jittery because we are rendering 190 FPS. However, oh, I got the bomb and I'm about to die. However, we are only capturing 60 of them. So one of the things that you can do to actually make your live stream look smoother, this is a little tech tip, is lock your, your gameplay at the FPS you're streaming. Now obviously if you're playing CSGO or any high paced game, you're gonna want higher FPS. Just know that if you're seeing stutters in the stream, it could be that because it is not rendering all the frames. It's only rendering, you know, one frame every, the math it works out to. Yeah, if you could pull it off, lock it at a multiple of this. Yeah, so we could do probably 120 FPS here. But one thing to keep in mind though, is you're seeing these high FPS, is this is significantly higher than the 60 FPS that we are capturing for our live stream. So if you see any weird stutters or it looks like frame drops, you literally are dropping frames. It's not capturing all of them. So if you're gonna lock your frame rate to anything, lock it to a divisible number of the FPS. So if we're at 60 and we do 120, it would actually look a lot smoother than doing 144 or leaving it here at the fluctuating 200s, 190s, 300s. But yeah, if we look over here at the live stream, it looks good. If we check our settings, we are getting 1080p 60 source. and not looking too fuzzy or anything. If you look at our CPU usage though, as you can see, we are looking pretty good here. Lots of headroom. Our GPU usage is only sitting at about 63, 65%. That's pretty normal, um, just because of CSGO itself. It's not a very demanding title. Yes, I know I'm kind of running all over the place randomly here. That's the point. I didn't die <laughs> as I was running out into the explosion. All right. So there's that. Um, let's go ahead and move on to a higher, like a little bit more fast paced game. Um, something that's gonna be, I think, a little bit more difficult, obviously, than CSGO to run, and that is Doom Eternal. So now we're using Doom Eternal, which is Vulkan, as you can see right here. It's Vulkan 1.1.1.2, or 126. It doesn't hook with window capture. We are using game capture for this one, but you can still see the telemetry is showing up over here just fine on the quarter, uh, the right side of the stream. So we're getting 337 FPS in the menu anyway. And we've moved the monitor on this side so Phil can move to it a little bit easier. Okay, I can tell you in the game right now, it doesn't feel like there's any performance hit. Now we are using the software to encode. If you can see right now, we are pegged 100% across the board. However, Phil, look at that mouse. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> but look at the stream. Oh, wow. So, as you can see, I was expecting Doom Eternal to not be that hard for the CPU to run, but as you can see on the live stream, yeah, it is, it is, it is incapable of doing it. So one thing you can try right here is setting the CPU to a higher priority to where we're letting the live stream take priority over uh, CPU usage instead of the game. So we're gonna set it to high right now, just to see if we can't get this to smooth out a little bit. Oh, look at that. 
but the the lost. we lost a lot of FPS in the game. We dropped. Well, anyway, we dropped down to ninety. <laughs> but that's not all. We that's that's not the only thing we can do. Like we talked about, the uh, sixty FPS is the priority. So let's drop this down to 720p stream. Because I would much rather watch a 720p 60 FPS stream than a 1080p 30 FPS stream. I can tell you right now, there's been times I live streamed at 720p when I was at on laptops and stuff, PDX LAN and stuff that I would go to. And anytime it was at 30, why is it at 30? Why is it at 30? No one ever once said, why is it at 720? So we've got most of that FPS back. And if you look at the live stream, just jump around. So we've got our performance back. So we look the same inside the game. We're well above 100 FPS, pretty close to our frame rate, uh, our, our Hertz rating of the monitor of 144. But I could play this. If, I, if I'm live streaming, I don't have a problem with this. So this is CPU priority is higher, uh, highest. And then if I wanted to, I bet you, it's fluctuating a bit, but I bet you right now I could, I could bring this down one priority tick, get back at least 144 FPS at all times, and then the stream quality wouldn't suffer. Looks like we're sitting much closer to that 130, 140 range. It's moving so fast, it's really hard to tell. But our CPU is staying in the green, our FPS is staying super consistent, if you look at that green line. And our stream, even though we're pegging 100 FPS, or 100% on our CPU, look at the live stream though, look how smooth it is. And you know what's funny? I really can't tell much of a fidelity change with 720 and 1080. Yeah, so two things to take away from this with Doom Eternal. The CPU itself perfectly capable of rendering a 720p 60 FPS live stream while gaming at 1080p and staying at about the 144 FPS of our monitor with a 2060 Super. So there is that. But what about a title that is way more demanding? Something like say Battlefield 5. All right, so Battlefield 5, we put all our settings back we put our CPU priority back to normal. We put it back to 1080p 60 FPS. This title is extremely, extremely demanding. And so I'm expecting this to probably, I'm not expecting it to be good, if I know the truth. I'm making sure what our settings are. So we're DX12 enabled, DXR is off. There's no way in hell you're gonna be doing any good DXR gameplay, even if you weren't streaming with a 2060 Super. Frame rate limiter, I'll do one, 20. All of our settings are on ultra. The reason why I'm setting those to ultra, still trying to offload as much as I can to the GPU, not the CPU. I, the, the lower you make this, the more work you make for the CPU because you are rendering more frames. And if it already can't keep up, throwing more frames at it is only gonna cause more latency and more stutters and more problems. More stutters, more problems. All right, one thing to keep in mind with Battlefield 5 is this is a very demanding game. I mean, look, in the menu, the menu, I'm at 106, and look at the CPU usage. And I'm not even, uh, yeah, I'm not even streaming yet. <laughs> so watch what happens when I hit start stream. And remember, we are on software right now. Look at that usage on the CPU. And once I come down into the game, oh, oh man. Look at the stream. I don't know, it's probably being smoothed out on the video. Oh you, no, it's terrible on the camera too, which means it's really bad. Cause yeah, this is it's, like a, FPS. it's like a slideshow. So as you can see, we're not even getting 60 FPS. Our CPU is just completely hammered. So what we're gonna do right now is we are gonna go ahead and go into our, our stream. We're gonna stop and we're gonna switch it back to NVEC, or I keep calling it NVEC, NVENC, whatever, however they pronounce it and we are going to hopefully see an improvement. Now you'll see the CPU usage came down. It's still really high, but it's no longer pegged. And that's the first thing we need. But if you look at the live stream now, it still has some stutters to it. And the reason for that, again, is the more the FPS fluctuates, 
the more that's going to look stuttery to the live stream because the live stream really does need a consistent frame rate because it's encoding constant bit rate. So we really do need it to be as smooth as possible. Now one way that we can do that is by coming into video and then turning on our frame rate limiter. So if we come in here to advance, we can go frame rate limiter and go down to 60. And by doing that, you can see our CPU usage came down even more and our FPS is more locked to 60 and our live stream just got even smoother. Let's see if I can't engage in something here, like a firefight or something. Oh, we were like, ah, oh, shooting each oh, other. <laughs> yeah. Both of us were like flailing around. Oh, I'm running towards the bad guys. <laughs> I thought I got hit from behind. That's why I keep going that way. We got something bit me, like in the butt. <laughs> Check this out. We're gonna do 1440p, 60 FPS. I wanna see how the stream handles it now. So getting the sizing right is when your game mode or exclusive full screen with Battlefield 5 is really dumb in that it rescales it. So watch the stream over here. Watch. Beep, there we go. <laughs> Oh, it's still not. What the f <laughs> Whatever. We can still see the performance, right? <laughs> yeah, look at, the, look at the GPU usage now. GPU usage is at 70%. Our CPU is in the 60s and 70s on our utilization and our gameplay. We're actually playing at 1440. I thought that was an enemy tank for a second, which is funny that I pointed my small arms fire at it. <laughs> he got hit by wow. my explosive and a tank. That, that guy's literally a traitor at now. He's not even a person anymore. <laughs> there was no but. Ooh, yeah. it might be a closed casket. Anyway, so if this sort of shows you anything, it's that we do not need to have high-end hardware to start entertaining people. If you guys want to live stream and you've got hardware that's $120 CPU, I mean, this is not a cheap GPU, but as it's not the super high end anyway. You can see we're not utilizing our full GPU when we start limiting things to like 60 FPS and whatnot. So even going with like a 1660 Ti, you'd probably get very comparable results to what we're seeing right now. And it still uses the same encoder. Now, one of the reasons why I say you don't want to build a standalone streaming machine is because any of the money that you've taken to build a second computer, especially I've seen people say, I'm gonna build two new computers right now, a gaming machine and a streaming machine. And if you're gonna take the money and build a second computer, you're gonna get much better results by taking that money and adding it to the budget for your gaming computer and get better parts as a whole. Then you're not dealing with any of the latency that can come from capture cards. You're not dealing with the setup issues. The only downside that I can actually see is if for some reason your machine crashes, which if you're not doing crazy overclocks and stuff, it really shouldn't, is your stream won't go down if you're capturing it with a second machine. But the setup complications of capturing all of your audio and your voice chats and all that sort of stuff and having to have everything run through the same HDMI cable in terms of audio and then having it split, that way you, this will hear everything, is just a complete pain in the ass versus just setting up your stuff right. And I've seen a lot of people say that, but you know, you lower end hardware, even mid -end, mid end hardware isn't very good at live streaming because it's too much of a stress. There's too, too much stress on the CPU. $120 CPU guys. This is a system that you could build for around a thousand-ish dollars. It's not, it's not crazy. If you add a thousand dollars to your gaming machine budget that you were already planning on building anyway, you can definitely step it up an entire tier and get even better results than you're seeing right now. So anyway, this is just a video I wanted to do showing people that you don't need crazy hardware to start live streaming, entertaining people, and just having a good time. So sign off in the comments below if you are using lower end hardware and you have a live stream, what's it been like? What hardware are you using and what's the general like performance hit that you're seeing and do you find it playable or unplayable? Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Sign up in the comments below if you meet that criteria for commenting on the hardware. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.